Overcoming by Pure Foy's Girl Chapter 36 The storm lessened in intensity, the rain becoming a gentle drone of sound on the roof that merged with Will's even breathing. It was a symphony that Hannibal relished, half asleep and curled around Will, whose feverish heat ebbed as he slept. He took every advantage of such a rare treat, spending this quiet moment enjoying, cherishing, and soothing his mate. Loving him, always and forever, just as he'd said. He drifted in the surety of it, surprised that the words hadn't escaped him already. They seemed perched on the tip of his tongue, a bird of prey readying to burst from his lips with his heart grasped in its talons. It was not soft nor gentle, but a force of nature that awed him, and he hoped, prayed, silently begged every listening ear of capricious fate that his wondrous mate would return his confession to him when he was finally able to speak it. A gentle rap on the door, furtive as if someone feared to disturb them, roused Hannibal from his half-asleep musings. Hoping it was their dinner tray, Hannibal eased out of the bed, smiling when Will's fingers tightened on his wrist, a soft chirp trilling out of him. I'm not going far, he murmured, kissing Will's temple in the firm muscle of his arm as he slipped from his warm embrace. He kissed Will's hand and tucked it beneath the blanket before he drew the curtains, shielding his mate from outside eyes. He donned his dressing gown quickly, not wishing to scandalize his staff with his state of undress, and hurried to answer the door in case it was some issue with Abigail requiring his attention. Berger was there when he opened the door, holding a lamp shuttered down to a narrow beam. Sorry to disturb you, my lord. Mr. Tear has come, Berger whispered. Randall, there's something wrong. Didn't say, my lord. It's down in the parlor. Mr. Thatcher's in a dither from them dogs' ears. It's soaked to the bone, dripping all over the floor. Don't worry about that, Thatch. Have you checked on Abigail? Berger nodded. Right as rain. She had some broth and another dose to help her sleep through the night, but she's cool to the touch and comfortable. Price and I are fixing to move her to the room you had made up. Hannibal cocked a brow, easing out of the room into the hall on the off chance their muted voices might wake Will. We thought it'd be for the best, Berger said, bare mention of his master's current personal state. Considering the uh, washroom ain't soundproofed, wouldn't want her to wake in the middle of things, would we? Good man, Hannibal said, clasping his shoulder. Indeed we wouldn't. I'll take care of my business with Mr. Tear and go check on her. Would you build up the fire and bring dinner up for us when you can? I'll keep an eye on Miss Alves, my lord, and give you a fair rest. Berger, you needn't. No, my lord, please. Berger said, holding up a hand to still him. You take care of his lordship, and let us handle the rest. Cook's just finishing the last touches on a special tray she insisted on making for him, so take your time and enjoy it. We figure you'd both have the appetite to do it justice. Hannibal grinned, touched by how delighted Berger was for them and how eager he was to keep them in one another's company. Keep a watch until I return. Price and I will see to it, so don't worry on that count, Berger said, moving to go with him. I'll lock up that suite once Abigail is moved. Thank you, Berger, Hannibal said, genuinely relieved to have such capable people in his company. His valet, never one to be caught at a loss, pressed the lamp into his hand and slipped into the suite, leaving Hannibal alone on the landing. He wished he'd had time to dress, or at least put slippers on to guard against the cold floors, but the arrival of Mr. Tear was so unquestionably out of character that he hurried downstairs without pausing. Mr. Thatcher was in the hallway, supervising one of the maids by lamplight as she cleaned up a trailing puddle of water and mud leading from the front door and down the hall. Hannibal picked up Randall's alpha scent, an odor of innards drawn hot from a body cavity and the wet, sour smell of old leather. It wrinkled Hannibal's nose and jerked his instincts to awareness, reminding him that his vulnerable mate was upstairs in the first throes of his heat. "'My lord, my deepest apologies,' the old butler began, horrified that the house should be seen in such a state. "'Your guest has made himself comfortable in the parlor.' "'Thank you, Thatch. Please leave that for morning,' Hannibal instructed, stepping carefully around it. "'No doubt there will be another layer added on his way out.' "'Should I prepare a room?' Mr. Thatcher asked, adding with dignified disapproval, "'In the stable, perhaps?' "'No, Thatch,' Hannibal said, his mouth quirking at the corners. "'That won't be necessary. Mr. Tear isn't one for being penned in. He'll be gone before you know it.' "'That is certainly a relief, my lord,' Thatch said, dismissing the maid with a sniff before opening the parlor door for them. 
Randall Tier was a tall, reed-slim figure who, predictably, stayed just beyond the reach of the candles. He stood near the windows with his two dogs at his side, the heavy chains from their collars looped to his belt. The sight of them never failed to impress Hannibal. The animal's raw-boned power seemed uncontrollable, a mere shrug of their shoulders more than enough to pull Tyr right off his feet. But never once had he seen them behave with anything other than strict discipline. "'Sorry about the mess,' Randall said, the chains clinking softly as he shifted. The dogs took two short steps forward, the faintest light finally hitting the trio. "'I'm sorry for the condition you found yourself in,' Hannibal said, dismissing it. "'And owe you a fair amount of worry over why you would be here in the midst of a storm. "'Mason has fled from the capital. "'Mr. Buddish has sent word to warn your girls.' "'I should hope he has,' Hannibal said, "'displeasure tightening his features when he noticed the way Randall tipped his head up, scenting the air. "'He cocked his head, stark warning on his face, which Randall heeded, "'abandoning the scent of an omega ripe in heat. "'If he has fled, why are you not following him? "'Why would you assume I'm not?' Randall asked, tipping his head in eerie mirror of the dogs. Like all men, Mr. Verger is predictable in his chaos, Lord Clarges. I'll have him in hand before long. The dogs tensed at his tone as if bracing to spring into action. Hannibal found himself comparing them to Winston, and once more admired their scrappy little stray's bravery, when he had neither the brute strength nor the threat of Randall Tear's darling hunting dogs. Mr. Buddish made mention there is another more immediate problem here at Marsham Heath. Randall said, holding his gaze with unblinking eyes, a dangerous blade of a boy with dangerous intentions that Hannibal was fully aware he bought and paid for. He suggested I offer my assistance to settle the issue quietly, as your household is at a temporary disadvantage with the local magistrate. I appreciate his foresight, Hannibal said, surprised all the same that Mr. Budish had enlisted Randall's help. There was a man on the loose in the forest, as a matter of fact. He murdered several little girls already and wishes to harm one who is under my personal protection. Randall blinked, an air of question falling over him. Should I put the matter to rest for you? It was tempting, certainly, and Hannibal considered it. He had absolute faith in Randall Tear's tracking skill, even with a storm washing away the trail. In a matter of days, he could run Hobbs down and either kill him, as Will said Hobbs would force his pursuers to do or haul him before the magistrate to face his crimes. But that would only give Mason more time to find protection, more time to lay his plots and wreak havoc. Hannibal knew he himself was a match for Hobbes on a good day, let alone factoring in a mate in heat. Should he even manage to break through the measures they'd taken, Hobbes would never leave Marsham Heath alive, let alone cause harm to either Abigail or Will. Hannibal would make sure of it. No, Mr. Tier, not unless the magistrate appeals to us for assistance. As soon as my mate is able, we will be leaving Marsham Heath. Mason is the more troubling threat. Mr. Verger is not as canny a prey as he imagines himself, Randall said, a small smile tightening his face. But the places he flees to are... interesting. I forget how little knowledge you have of your homeland, Hannibal said, opening the shutter on one lamp to dispel the shadows. Randall flinched, face pulled in a spasm before falling back to eerie stillness when he said, "'I haven't any homeland, Lord Clarges, as you well know.' Hannibal frowned, saying, "'You said the same thing when I treated you, Randall. Whether you claim it or not, this country is where you were born and you fought to defend it.' "'Mostly,' Randall said. The small smile that played on his thin lips should have made him appear younger, but it only made him more unsettling, even to Hannibal, who knew him better than most.' But I came to ask you a question I felt best not committed to paper. When I find Mr. Verger this time, Lord Clarges, what do you want done? Surely, for all the worry he causes, you must wish me to do more than watch him. Hannibal took a deep breath, feeling the weight of that question. He thought of Will, upstairs and vulnerable. He thought of Alana, ready to deliver her baby any moment and only wishing to live her life happily with the woman she loved and their daughter. He thought of Margot and all that she had suffered, the justice she'd been denied and the things she'd been forced to accept. They would never be safe as long as Mason trod the earth, slithering out from beneath the strictures of the law, and blithely walking free when lesser monsters sat in prison. I want you to do something I should have had you do from the start. Hunt him down like the monster he is, and scatter what's left of him for the beast to pick over. At least in that he can be of some use. 
Elation animated Randall's face, excited to be freed of his lead and loosed to take his hunt to its conclusion. I've been waiting a long time for you to say that, Randall admitted, his dog shifting at his feet, made restless by his agitation. Before you end your hunt, Mr. Tear, Hannibal said, unmoved to have just ordered a man's death. I want you to question Mason in regards to his whereabouts since he slipped your watch. Some very frightening accusations have been taken against my mate, and I am suspicious that Verger or his father might be behind them. I want the names of all of his associates, every one he's had contact with. I want to know how he got back here and who aided him. Randall's eyes sparkled with renewed interest. He cocked his head and said, I will press Mr. Verger for answers. If they do not satisfy, is there, perhaps, a, another hunt to be had? Hannibal's mouth bowed down into grim frown, but he said, I was a rather skilled hunter on that particular trail even now, Mr. Tear, but depending on what you uncover, perhaps, perhaps. Randall's lips split in a wide grin, bearing his alpha fangs in expression of rare, true pleasure. I will get your answers, Lord Clarges. Where should I send word? To Mr. Buddish as there is no certainty where we will be at any given moment. Randall stirred toward the door, the dogs immediately at attention. You should like to wait out the storm, Mr. Tear, Hannibal said, eyeing the beasts yet again. I can have a place prepared for you. No, thank you, Lord Clarges, Randall said, reaching down to pat the wet heads of his companions. We are never bothered by nature's whims. Are we, my darling girls? He straightened, meeting Hannibal's gaze with the same placid calm that had greeted him when Randall had been brought to him mostly dead on the battlefield. "'I will take care of it, Lord Clarges. he promised, inclining his head in a gesture he rarely used. "'I am nothing if not your faithful servant.' "'I trust that you will, and know that you are,' Hannibal told him, and it seemed to content him, if such an unsettled soul as Randall Tear could ever claim contentment. Hannibal escorted him to the door and watched him go vanishing out into the storm as it strengthened again, the wind whipping his coat around him like the rapid flutter of a raven's wings, another force of nature unleashed to act on the world without mercy. Will woke alone, curled up in the nest of mounded covers with the ripe scent of sex and alpha permeating the air. He sat up in the darkness, the soft sounds of the fire being stoked and the quiet bustle of someone tending to the room reaching him through the closed curtains. It was a soothing reassurance, and he sank into the pillows with a soft sigh, blinking in the darkness. There was a wet spot beneath the press of his backside, hot from the heat of his body, and increasingly uncomfortable. He irritably wished whoever they were away so he could change the bedding. He shifted, restless, straining to hear when the door creaked again, the sound of voices in low conversation, a quiet, unintelligible drone. As ridiculous as it was to be hiding in bed in one's own room, Will couldn't see a way to emerge gracefully with only soiled linens to clothe himself in. And then there was Hannibal. He could feel him there, just beyond the bed curtains, his presence a licking flame drawing closer as if lured. The tread of his feet was a vibration like thunder. Will's toes curled in response, a reaction to his mate's nearness, as visceral as the fullness that swelled his heart. A fine sweat broke out on his skin when he thought of his husband. The weight of the blankets rasped against his sensitive skin, a phantom reminder of Hannibal's touch that made him wriggle, half in embarrassment, half in delight. His body reacted as if trained, nipples tightening and goosebumps rising on his arms. Instead of satisfying his heat, their coming together had only provided fodder for his imagination to torment him, feeding the fire of his desire until his thighs clenched tight and his body stiffened beneath the sheets. The intimacy they had shared, the fervent whispers of devotion Hannibal had spilled into his ear. It was enough to feed him for a lifetime should he need it. But there was every chance that he wouldn't need, that he could have more nights like this for the rest of their lives. Will lolled on the bed, smiling and drawing his memories to him, better than any jewels in his opinion. Hannibal's affection for him was genuine, there was no doubt in his mind about that. If it was not love, it was close enough to kiss— something that Will never dreamed he would find, let alone in the man he was married to. He thrilled to Hannibal's touch, enjoyed his often perverse and unusual humor, found his sharp intelligence provoking and a match for his own. The things he had feared as a child, Hannibal's severity, his temper, his cruelty, had all vanished like fog on the river under the welcoming sun. 
No more flowers fed to currants, no more regrets, no more words left unsaid, no more isolation, just the certainty of his happiness and contentment. An errant breeze from the window plucked at the bed curtains and opened a seam, letting in an eddy of fresh air. Hannibal's thick scent spilled around him, teasing his desire like a cool, calm hand. His fingers clenched in the bedding, and he shuddered breathless. He was used to sexual frustration during heats, used to the ache that would drive him to tears with needed satisfying. But this was a whole new cliff he was perched on, with a plunge promising an agony of pleasures yet to be explored, because he needed Hannibal. He needed the soft purr of his voice and the curl of his lips when he smiled. He needed the teasing taunt of his voice and the comfortable companionship that had grown up between them. He needed him because he, when you love him, will lose every last piece of yourself to the bond he forced on you. Will stilled, his musings interrupted by the whisper of his father's voice. He rolled onto his side and buried his face in the pillows, seeking the comforting reassurance of Hannibal's scent. It poured in through his nose and mouth, thick and permeating everything Hannibal had touched. The phantom of his father's voice faded along with his warning, eased by his confidence in Hannibal's feelings for him, by the growing certainty that he had found his place to call home, and that he could trust it. Finally, finally, a happiness that would not be torn from him. The window sash complained as it was closed, cutting off the breeze. The curtain fell back to cloak Will in darkness, curiosity breaking through his deep thoughts when he heard water being poured and the dripping noises of a cloth being wrung out. He realized too late what his husband had intended, about the time that the curtains were pulled back, letting in the cool air and the firelight and exposing him there with his sweaty back bared to the room. Will got control of himself, bracing to turn and face his husband, but before he could speak he was eased fully onto his belly, and the sheets were slipped down to his hips in a lingering brush of fingertips. "'Jimmy will be back with a try for us in a bit,' Hannibal said, murmuring it as if he feared to wake Will." but couldn't resist speaking to him all the same. The bed shifted when he sat down, dipping Will's lax body against Hannibal's thigh. A moment later, the wet cloth pressed carefully to his skin, and Hannibal began to clean the bite mark on Will's throat, light motion so as not to pain him. Abigail is resting comfortably. A room was prepared for her in the attic. Emily is spending the night to watch over her, and Berger is watching her like a hawk. Will relaxed into the bedding, barely wincing when a light salve was rubbed over the mark on his neck. Hannibal's fingertips were tender, lingering over the outline of his teeth. The touch tingled, tickling, and Will let the sensation slide over him, repressing the shiver that threatened. I should be ashamed of myself, Hannibal breathed, tracing it with fascination. But all I feel when I see this is immense satisfaction. Were you awake, you would no doubt fling that lamp at my head for saying such a thing. Will bit his lip against a smile at that, content to remain asleep, as his husband rinsed and wrung the cloth out again before wiping the sweaty nape of his neck. The cloth rubbed over his shoulders, soothing and cooling. Hannibal wiped him carefully from nape to the dimple of his buttocks in slow strokes. His damp skin dried quickly, the florid heat pushed back by his husband's thoughtful ministrations. He tightened beneath the trailing touch of Hannibal's fingertips when he traced the curve of his spine, muscles twitching to his touch. Hannibal followed his fingertips with his lips, kissing Will's nape, hands spreading over his back to knead him an absent massage. Will's whole body went liquid with relaxation, supple and giving beneath Hannibal's touch, the ache in his groin tempered with anticipation as Hannibal's hands spanned his lower back, fingers curving around his waist. Will, Hannibal breathed sighing against his skin as he kissed him, learning the pattern of his scars with lips and tongue, thumbs firmly rubbing the base of Will's spine. He kissed each scar, whispering Will's name, and drew away with a final kiss to the top of Will's backside. The sheets were peeled down to his thighs, and Will stifled an indignant squeal when the cloth, freshly rinsed and squeezed, slid down into the cleft of his backside, cleaning him up with care. It should have been horrifying, that cool, wet washcloth in such tender areas. Instead, Will felt a flush suffuse him, his heat responding with gusto as Hannibal carefully cleaned him. You can tell me to stop, Hannibal purred, tossing the cloth over the foot of the bed and shifting, rolling Will onto his back where the sheets were dry. They locked eyes in the firelight, Hannibal's amused smirk widening to a smile when he saw how flustered his mate was. He fetched a clean cloth and dipped it in the tepid water. 
He wrung it out slowly, giving Will plenty of time to say something. He didn't say anything at all. Hazy-eyed but smiling, he reached out to touch Hannibal's leg, resting his hand on the bare knee exposed in the seam of his dressing gown. Will stroked him there, smoothing his finger over hot skin and hair, finding that the hair on his husband's body was a delightful contrast to the fine, almost invisible hair that dusted his own thighs and forearms. "'How long have you been awake?' Hannibal asked, wiping Will's forehead as if he wasn't achingly aware of his mate's earthy arousal, or the straining curve of his sex on his belly, rosy pink at the head and pearly pale, just as he imagined. "'As long as you've known I was.' Will retorted, sighing as the cloth wiped down his cheeks and beneath his jaw, careful not to disturb the salve on his throat. You moved up, Abigail. A very enterprising valets did so, Hannibal said, smoothing the cloth over one alabaster shoulder. He lifted Will's arm by his wrist and cradled it, concentrating on his muscular bicep. Our suites are proofed for sound, but the washroom had no need of such a consideration. They felt all sensibilities would be better spared while she moved. "'How is she?' Will asked, a pleasant shiver coursing through him when the wet cloth swept down his ticklish side. "'Sleeping,' Hannibal told him, settling Will's hand back on his thigh, where it stayed, even as he dipped and wrung out the cloth again. "'I imagine we'll be having a very unusual conversation rather soon.' "'You may have to have it without me,' Will said, breath catching when the cloth brushed over his chest, wiping the sweat away. "'I doubt I will be fit to see her.' Berger's promised to care for her, Hannibal told him, wiping down his other side to his flank. So that I may care for you. We will speak with her together. I think it would be best for us all to address this in solidarity. I don't suppose you were downstairs speaking with Jack by any chance, Will murmured, shifting when the cloth brushed over his nipple, Hannibal's thumb giving it a soft rub for good measure that was too quick, a jolt of sensation in passing that made Will draw a sharp breath. No. Hannibal said, leaning over him to press a kiss to his sternum, right over his thumping heart. Will's heat-sensitive nose picked up the scent of a strange alpha on his husband, a bare wisp of disturbance. Wet dog, wet leather, wet meat. Who was here? he asked, wrinkling his nose against it, rejecting that scent in favor of Hannibal's. Mr. Tear, Hannibal said, nuzzling Will's chest before straightening. He dipped the cloth again, and smoothed it up Will's flank, tugging his thigh to bear that soft place where leg met groin. He braved the storm to see if we needed assistance with Mr. Hobbs. I thought he was tracking Mason, Will said, finding it rather hard to concentrate when that cloth brushed the tight skin of his member in a cool kiss of fine wet linen. Mr. Buddish sent him along in case we had need of him. Did you send him on me? I did, but it's gone now. Will said, drawing an unsteady breath when the cloth moved closer to his groin, his sex buckled with impatience, straining against his belly. Will he? Help with Mr. Hobbs, I mean. It would be a relief to know he has been dealt with, Hannibal murmured, returning the cloth to the basin for another rinse. I felt we should err on the side of caution if we wished to leave with Abigail in our keeping. Magistrate Crawford is already frustrated and powerless. Capturing or killing Hobbs without his presence or approval— would only make him more so. The fewer reminders he has of us, the better. He wrung the cloth out, the way his fingers worked as they squeezed, making Will wish he could trade places with it. It pulled a shudder from him, all else pushed aside for the urgency of his heat. The cloth returned, gliding over his groin from his heated slit and over the thrumming length of his sex. The gods have truly blessed me with you, Will. Hannibal purred, squeezing him. Will's hips arched, flanks taut, a frown wrinkling his brow as he concentrated on his husband's touch. I never expected to find you so amply endowed. Hannibal's hand was firm around him, squeezing him rhythmically, just enough friction to make him thrash. Wetness oozed from his tip, caught on the cloth as it was drawn from him. Does it bother you? Will asked, breathless, a teasing smile on his lips. On the contrary inspiring an entire new world of possibilities I had never considered before. Hannibal told him, rubbing his thumb beneath Will's head until his breath stuttered on a gasp. Will laughed, a raspy sound Hannibal delighted in, but any thoughts he had on that subject were lost to a lusty moan, his sex twitching in Hannibal's milking grip. Oh, Will, I want so badly to knot you right now, Hannibal sighed, bending over him to kiss his tip as it peeked from the washcloth. 
He tongued his head, tracing the stretch of his frenulum as he tugged downward. Will moaned, winding his fingers into Hannibal's hair, his thighs parting, just the mention of Hannibal's not enough to make him clench. Gods, the moment I returned, I could taste you, Hannibal said, curling his tongue around Will's sex to give it a teasing suck. I could feel you here, pressed into the mattress and ready, wet and soft inside and hard without. Will bit his lip, urging Hannibal's mouth down on him. A low, keening groan pulled from him as his husband swallowed him down into constricting heat. Hannibal's fingers pressed to his slit, and Will cocked his knee up, burying himself for the fingers curling inside of him, a knot of knuckles that teased him to greater heights. He rocked against Hannibal's hand, thrusting up into his mouth. It was incredible to have such a powerful alpha purring and complacent, eyes closed in pleasure and perfectly content to have his omega driving himself down his throat in unsteady thrusts. It was even more incredible to have his husband so lovingly move against him, swallowing against the intrusion, intent on giving Will every pleasure he could imagine. He wanted it to last, wanted to spend hours milking the enjoyment out of it, plunging into Hannibal's hot mouth to feel the lash of his tongue on his straining sex. But even the idea of it was too much, and Will clutched up, body jerking in pleasure as he spilled down Hannibal's throat, the demanding clench of his body squeezing down around the fingers working inside of him. Gods, don't stop! Will sobbed, arching up to strain against him, stars bursting across his vision. Hannibal! He didn't. He suckled Will through a second orgasm, fighting the shudders that racked him, and rocking his fingers deep, until Will's wet body gripped up around him, seeking a thickness his fingers simply couldn't offer, seeking a knot that even his clenched fist could not rival, though he nearly brought himself just imagining Will's taut young body tightening down around his whole hand. He drew up off Will's softening sex with a throaty curse he sincerely hoped Will had not heard, panting and aching. Will's fingers tightened in his hair as he tugged, urging Hannibal to cover him, trading that handhold for his dressing down and his sash, yanking his husband up to settle between his spread thighs. Will. Hush, Will said, fingers trembling as he fought the knot on Hannibal's dressing gown. He abandoned it, tugging the material over his groin instead. The full jut of his flesh followed, a hefty weight against Will's stomach. Hannibal moaned when he touched it, shuddering like a wounded beast above him. "'I'll be here any moment with the dinner tray,' he said, whispering it in Will's ears, the words accompanied by a bite to his earlobe. "'You started it,' Will reminded him, pushing his hips back to make room. His fingers danced over the silky length of him in a frenzied caress before he pushed Hannibal's engorged head against his entrance, impatient and hurried. Hannibal's long back flexed and he buried himself in a sure thrust that left them both gasping, surging together on the bed in a pulse of joined flesh.' It was urgent and intense, Hannibal driving into him with such desperate ferocity that the bed thumped a cadence against the wall, the old wooden frame creaking with abuse. Their eyes locked, fastened on one another in a helpless fascination as it built and built between them. Every deep plunge burst through Will's right body in a rupture of pleasure, each cat of his tight slit on Hannibal's growing knot, a shock of almost pain all the sweeter for how good it felt. "'Gods, you're so tight,' Hannibal moaned, tongue darting out to lave Will's parted lips. "'Let me see you come apart for me, Will.' He did, crying in pleasure and burning release, every muscle drawing tight in a spasm of sensation that broke on shudder so great it refused to be contained. Hannibal moaned above him, amber eyes wide and excited. "'Not me,' Will moaned, thrashing beneath him, an undulation of his lean body threatening to take what he asked for. He tipped his head up and bit Hannibal's lower lip, whispering his own words back to him. Let me see you come apart for me, Hannibal. Hannibal's hips surged in forceful thrust, burying his aching sex and knot deep in Will's hot, slick body. The sound he made when Will locked around him was bestial, guttural, divorced of any semblance of propriety as the first flood of his seed rushed out of him in orgasm. His hips tightened, back drawing taut as he worked his swelling knot against the squeeze of Will's body the seal around him a painful pleasure that pushed them both to climax over and over until there was nothing left to give. Will lay pinned beneath Hannibal's boneless weight, both of them panting. His slender arms folded around Hannibal's heated back, the dressing gown sticking to them both with their mingled sweat. When Hannibal chuckled, Will turned his head a fraction, tightening his thighs around his husband's lean hips and rubbing his back. 
What is it? <laughs> Nothing, Hannibal murmured, his panting slowing down, but his voice still raw from exertion. Only perhaps I misspoke. Will shifted again, opening for a kiss when Hannibal lifted his head to look down at him. I said you would be the undoing of me. Hannibal purred, throbbing like a second heartbeat inside of Will's body. A pounding pulse he squeezed down around just to feel more acutely. Hannibal caught his breath straining against him in a brief spasm and said, I should have said you would be the death of me. Am I now accused of attempting to murder you? Will asked, grinning when he earned a kiss. At this rate, I won't last the next few days. Oh, you've kept up fairly well so far. Will told him, adding with an impish gleam in his eyes. For an old man. Hannibal's amber eyes flashed. Is that a challenge? I think it just might be. Will offered, rolling his hips up to feel the firm kiss of Hannibal's wide head deep inside of him. Then I accept, Hannibal said, leaning down to tease Will with another deep, delightful kiss. They ate, eventually late that evening with the storm wearing itself out overhead. Will simmered in his heat, fueled by Hannibal's rut, feeding one another from the tray of cold meats and iced fruits that Jimmy had provided, supplementing with kisses that threatened to distract them. Hannibal drew a bath for him and changed the bedding while he soaked, taking every care with his comfort before having a bath of his own. Will drank half a jug of cold water in his absence, his craving for salt satisfied by the cured meats that he was firmly assured were procured from the capital, and not from the Hobbs family. Hannibal emerged in short order, damp and shivering at the chill that lingered. Will curled up the bed and watched him, deep contentment filling him as Hannibal bent to bank the fire for the night. His features were hawkish in the golden light, stark in absent repose. Will's heart swelled with affection for him, knowing his husband was nothing like his looks would have him seem. The force of his tenderness left him breathless with how much this man had come to mean to him in such a short time, awed that they had ever found one another so perfectly suitable after the horrors of their beginning. Hannibal turned and caught him looking, and Will grinned when his husband asked, Now who is smiling? I am. Will said, hugging a pillow to his chest and stretching long on the bed, the smooth texture of the covers prickling his skin. His smile deepened when Hannibal abandoned the fire to crouch next to the bed and kiss his hand, nuzzling him for the touch of his fingers. You look so intimidating, Will whispered, smoothing his hand over Hannibal's high cheekbone with reverence. When I first met you, you seemed more like a, a statue to me. A perfect, beautiful sculpture of marble, smooth, cold stone, with the same reserve and grim intent of a god. Hannibal grinned, bearing his sharp alpha fangs in the firelight. What do I seem like now? He murmured, kissing the pulse point at Will's wrist just to feel the thrum of his heart pick up its pace. Warm? Will said, spreading his fingers over Hannibal's cheek to trace the jut of his severe cheekbone. Understanding, accepting, insatiable. Shall I make a quip about pots and kettles? Hannibal asked, grinning, when Will laughed, subsiding. His smile turned thoughtful enough that Hannibal asked, Is something troubling you? No, no, it's just... Uh, this isn't like what I feared it would be, Will finally said, shifting to make room as Hannibal stood. He shivered, the cold air and Hannibal slipping out of his dressing gown, conspiring to distract him. I thought I would lose myself somehow if I ever let an alpha touch me, that that I would get swallowed up in my own nature and become some wretched bitch in heat. Hannibal paused, one knee on the bed, his bare body limbed in light. I was always told that I, I would be overcome with frenzy, Will said, feeling the sudden silence with words. He turned away, the bed sinking as Hannibal slid in next to him that my heat would reduce me to some pitiable creature begging for a knot, any knot, and I, I would be mindless in my desires. Who on earth told you that? Hannibal asked, drawing Will into the shelter of his arms, bare skin on bare skin, coiling around him to keep him safe. My sisters, Will said, pushing his nose beneath Hannibal's jaw to comfort himself with his scent. Hannibal wrapped his arms around him and pulled him in tight, soothing him. My father... He said heat was the ruin of many an Omega reduced to prostitution with the drive of their needs. 
he cautioned me strongly never to allow myself near an alpha during such a time in in case i should become nothing more than a void of demands from that point on god your family is a menace what did your mother tell you i was never given any other instruction and with the way my heats were the way i felt in those times i was certain they were right it seemed i was nothing more than an empty space waiting to be filled mindless and desperate for breeding the tone of his voice brought hannibal's amber eyes to search his face curious he asked how long have you been having heats will you were very young when you first came to hartford i imagined it would take years no will said his smile more grimace in his sudden discomfort no no and they um, they told me you'd gone well let's just say my nature overreacted Hannibal frowned, his arms tightening on his mate in a spasm of distress. Will, are you telling me that my leaving provoked your first heat? Yes, Will said, simple and direct. There was no reproach in his voice, but there didn't need to be. Hannibal had enough reproach for the both of them. I was terrified I'd done everything wrong, Will admitted, tracing patterns in the hair on Hannibal's chest, anything to avoid making eye contact. I was sure that the direct lector line would end because of me, that I would be annulled and sent home in disgrace to be punished by my father. I suppose my body decided a last-ditch effort was in order and attempted to, to draw you to me with such an awful state. Awful state, Will, you are having heat. Your first heat, which I understand, is often the worst. He mentally berated himself for not being there when Will needed him, his self-recrimation redoubling when he realized just how many of Will's seasons he'd missed. I should have been there, he said, squeezing Will to his chest. God's will, all this time I should have been there, but for your first... I don't think that would have gone well for either of us, considering your reaction to my initial offer, Will said, his hand sliding between them to find and rub the softness of Hannibal's belly. His husband was lithe and sleek, a toned beast from head to elegant toe, but the beauty of him was elevated to perfection by the softness of his belly. Will couldn't resist cupping that slight roundness, distracting himself from his painful thoughts. I hid in my dressing room. I was so mortified. Jimmy would bring me trays every few hours to be sure I had enough to eat and drink. Please tell me you haven't been spending your heats in your dressing room, Hannibal said, aghast at even the idea of it. He rubbed his chin over Will, a distressed, unconscious marking he couldn't control. No, 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 of course not. I have a room in the attic. It's quiet there, and I don't bother anyone. Will. God, six years. He trailed off, quietly horrified to think of his mate suffering through this alone all these years. He shifted, drawing Will's hand from his stomach to lace their fingers together, earnest when he said, You understand. It is no encumbrance, Will. When you speak of your heat, of the very natural rhythm of your body that nothing and no one can help or change, it pains me to hear you do such with loathing. Will's fingers tightened in his reflexively, a bare betrayal of his thoughts. I hear the echo of the man I was in your words, Hannibal said, tugging on him to get his attention. I hear your father's lessons and I want to erase them from your heart. What you said to me when I was so deep inside of you is the truth. It is beautiful, Will. Hannibal bent his head and kissed him, wrapping Will in the comfort of his scent, noting the dots of sweat welling up on his temples. Perhaps I am selfish to say so, but I hope you will spend every moment of every heat to come, allowing me to make up for it, to care for you as an alpha and as your mate. Will smiled, his lower lip curling inward in a way that Hannibal found to be his favorite, a sure indication he had surprised his mate. Will snuggled against him, his palms settling on Hannibal's stomach once more as if he couldn't resist it. That is selfish. But an alpha is expected to be selfish at times. Then I am gladly myself, Hannibal said, his husband warming in his arms, the urge to come together rising between them, all the stronger for being shared. He wet his lips and added in breathless whisper, As I hope you are gladly yourself in turn. Will slipped over him, lithe and weighty and warm, and whispered with a kiss, I'm starting to be. For the next four days, the Lord's clarges heeded nothing in the world but one another. Nature held them fast in the palm of her hand, floating in a sensual haze that left no room beyond the next kiss, the next touch, the next breathless confession. 
Idle conversations became serious ones. Curious questions led to seeking touches. They poured over one another until every mole, every hair, every tender inch was memorized and savored. Will had never felt so profoundly cherished in his life, and Hannibal had never felt so complete. Yet the bond Hannibal instinctively searched for, reached for, longed for, was nowhere to be found. It distressed him more than he thought it might. It worried him that his own failings as an alpha, his own refusal to heed his instincts, had somehow cheated them of what should have come naturally. Time and again he strained to make that connection without managing to do so. Having failed Will in so many ways to this point, it disturbed Hannibal that he would fail him in this, too, that some lack on his part would prevent them from having what was largely claimed to be the most satisfying aspect of an Alpha Omega joining. But bond or no bond, he had Will. Not forever, perhaps, not even past the demands of his voracious heat, but for now, he had him, and after everything that had happened, he could never ask for more than to love his husband as much or as little as Will would allow. On the fifth morning, Will woke up in reluctant degrees, warm and content and sore. He yawned softly and snuggled closer to the warm, large body curled around his, legs tangled together beneath the bedclothes. Hannibal's furry chest and belly were pressed snug to his back and bottom, both of them nude as grapes. The heat haze had gone, leaving in its place the mixed moments of the last few days he'd spent being thoroughly and expertly bred to his eyeballs in Hannibal's huge four-poster bed. He couldn't recall many details past the first night quite as yet. It all melded into a dreamlike euphoria of shared orgasm and insatiable hunger for one another that his heat and Hannibal's rut had only amplified rather than created. Will cautiously placed a hand over his belly, swollen from hard use. He usually did swell some, his womb demanding tribute and his hormones stimulating him to be receptive. That wasn't quite the only reason this time, he knew, and dreaded standing up. All of Hannibal's copious leavings had to go somewhere, and straight down both legs was the reasonable assumption. The bed was soaked beneath them, the scent of spent sex so strong that Will's mouth watered, a tingle of arousal running over him. Hannibal nuzzled his nape, exhaling deeply against Will's curls, one heavy arm folded over his chest and pinning him into place. Will shivered, goosebumps rising over his skin, a responsive lurch inside of him bringing more soreness to the surface. He felt raw and sensitive, puffy to such an extreme that even his member was swollen from friction of relentless use. Hannibal's scent permeated him, covering his own with alpha male sweat and seed. I oh, want you so full of me or heavy with it. Will smiled at the memory of those words, spoken in a heated moan against his ear. The moment returned clearly, the powerful pistoning of his husband's corded hips driving the hard curve of his sex deep, the hands that had pinned him in his writhing need, the gratifying climax that had claimed them both, leading to Hannibal's fervent wish and the reverent touch to his belly. Hannibal clutched Will tighter in response to his shiver, covering him with heat and heavy scent, and preventing him from moving. It was comforting, comfortable, a teasing promise of what could be if Will accepted Hannibal into his life, into his bed, and into his heart. The future was no longer a bleak horror before him, but one filled with potential that Hannibal would strive to make true. They could be happy together, content in one another, as their affection blossomed to something more, share the joy of raising the children Hannibal insisted would be born. Grandfather would be overjoyed, and even if things weren't always perfect, at least they would be able to find their way ahead together, invested in one another as equals. And what will you tell him about your bond? Will's happy smile faltered, the thought a product of habit, of a lifetime spent questioning even the smallest thing that went right. He touched the bite on his neck, anxiety threading its way into his glowing joy. He shivered, recalling how Hannibal had marked him, those heavy alpha fangs putting a claiming bite on him that Will had never imagined he would carry. The bond should have followed. This was how they should have formed, twined into one and clinging together, body locked to body in pleasure. It should have been the ultimate culmination of what they'd shared. But it hadn't happened. It hadn't been enough to negate the bond Will had formed, and he feared it never would be. Francis's anguished voice returned to him with a sense memory of his wood smoke scent, whispering, 
it cannot be undone. Will drew a shaky breath, worry pressing down the swell of happiness within him. He had so hoped through some magic of serendipity that what they were feeling for one another, that the strength of their connection they shared, would allow a bond to form from Hannibal's end, uniting them into one. Hannibal's heartbeat echoed through his chest, strong and steady, a sound and feeling Will had come to rely on. It had lulled him to sleep and pounded a rhythm of excitement over the past few days, a sure measure of Hannibal's state of mind. Throughout it all, Hannibal had been eager and delighted by everything that had happened, endlessly praising Will from his eyebrows to the dangerous sharpness of his mind. Yet all this time, Hannibal had never questioned why a bond had not formed. He never even seemed to notice or expect such a thing. Perhaps a man who was willing to overlook a barren mate was also willing to overlook the lack of a reciprocal bond. Perhaps, as he claimed, having Will was enough and he would never ask, never wonder, never dream that Will's twisted bond existed. Will rolled in his loose embrace, cupping Hannibal's stubble-shadowed jaw, breathing in time with him. He brushed an errant lock of hair from his golden brow, fingertips falling to trace the fine, nearly invisible arch of one eyebrow. The scar from Will's crop crossed his cheek, a pink seam across his stark cheekbone. Will traced it, and aching tenderness overcame him, so strong that he blinked back sudden tears. He swallowed hard against it, knowing that it was no simple infatuation that swelled and fluttered in his chest, beating wings like a butterfly's in the cage of his soul. The distant roar of waves beating themselves against the cliff grew louder in his imagination. He knew how precarious his position was. He was poised with one foot over the abyss, arms open as if he might fly instead of fall, and all that awaited him was a drop that could, for all its elation, end in the same painful way. Well, Hannibal murmured, disturbed by the strength of his emotions, a frown bowing his mouth. His hand smoothed over Will's side the same long fingers that had traced Will's scars, the same hand that had brought him so much pleasure, the same hand that had seized him almost seven years ago and shaken him into an attachment Hannibal had no idea existed. Will would have to confess to it, would have to tell Hannibal the unhappy truth in all its implications. It didn't frighten him to think of doing so. It frightened him because he knew how his husband would react. He would smooth Will's curls, press Will's hands to his cheeks, and claim it didn't matter. Greedy, Hannibal had said of himself, insisting he could never get his fill, but who was being greedy in the end if Hannibal decided he could and would give up his chance for a child and a bond for Will's sake? It might work at first, for ten or fifteen years, until the bloom went off the rose and the novelty wore thin, and Hannibal caught the scent of an omega who— Stop! Will breathed admonishing himself and appalled with his own thoughts, knowing very well that Hannibal would resist any temptation. He was a man of his word, a man of integrity and fidelity, who kept the promises he made, no matter what, because he cared about Will and wanted to make things right. Guilt. And how much guilt would settle on Will's heart years down the line when he looked at this man, beautiful, wonderful, changed, beyond recognition into someone Will took immeasurable delight in, and knew himself to be a burden at long last? What kind of person would make such demands of someone they cared for so deeply? Will drew a cautious breath, his throat tight with an ache he couldn't force down. He needed a moment to himself, away from the influence of Hannibal's presence and his soothing scent. He needed to think, clearly and rationally, and he could not do that when every inch of him wanted nothing more than to delve into Hannibal's arms and resign the rest to the whims of fate. The very strength of his affections made him question his own motives. Did he want Hannibal to stay and consign himself to half-lived life because he cared for him? Or did he care enough for Hannibal to want better for him than he would get? What had been done to Will wasn't fair, but neither was holding an alpha in a potentially childless marriage without even the comfort of a bond. He couldn't make his decision on the basis of his own happiness, not any more, and he wouldn't make it alone. He had to consider it carefully, weigh the loss against the potential gains, and do what was in everyone's best interests. He would tell Hannibal about the bond, take his responses into consideration, 
and then put an end to this lingering anticipation by making his decision at long last. Feeling more in control with such a plan, Will waited until Hannibal slid back into deeper sleep and managed to wriggle free of him, swinging his feet out from beneath the bedclothes to plant his bare feet on the cold floor. A warm hand brushed down his spine, and Will gasped, shivering, cheeks flaming with bright color. Will, Hannibal murmured, awakening to find him perched on the edge of the bed, about to flee as fast as he could safely hobble away. The bed shifted, and Will tipped backwards with a soft yelp, tumbling into the heat of Hannibal's body as he sat up. Hannibal chuckled softly at him, holding him fast, and asked, "'What's wrong?' "'Nothing,' Will said, his flesh betraying him, florid and heated. Hannibal searched his face, noting the absence of a glassy sheen to his eyes, the coolness of his skin, his rising agitation, all hallmarks that Will's heat had ended. Amused to see such a surly expression on his mate's beautiful face, Hannibal easily scooped him up into his arms and packed him off to the washroom, ignoring Will's indignant squeak. "'What are you doing?' Will demanded, mortified when Hannibal plopped him down on the toilet, both of them still stark naked and tacky with sweat, seed, and saliva. Hannibal turned away from him to pump a few splashes of water into the tub, testing to make sure it was warm, the slope of his shoulders and the bare length of his strong back a stark reminder to Will of just how powerful his body truly was. The silence that stretched was blessedly broken by the slap of water into the tub, muting the embarrassing result of Hannibal's alpha excess. Hannibal filled the tub halfway before he straightened and turned, the outgrowth of stubble softening the severe lines of his mouth and jaw. Will felt that stubble prickle him in his memory, catching on the suck-swollen, tender skin of one nipple, the rasp of it soothed away by Hannibal's laving tongue. Will averted his gaze so rapidly he swayed on the toilet. Seeing Hannibal's body by firelight was much different than seeing him in strong sunlight, and he was every bit as beautiful to Will now as he'd been in the height of his heat, from the amused curve of his mouth down the furry expanse of his chest to the slight rise of his belly where the hair grew darker and thicker, framing his heavy sex between his solid thighs. Will bent over and hid his face against the knees, fingers laced over the back of his head, his pearly skin turning ever-deepening shades of pink. Charmed by Will's response, Hannibal chuckled softly. Will, it isn't as if you haven't seen me naked. Not like this, Will said, proud of how steady his voice was, even if it was muffled by his knees. Could you please excuse me? Of course, Hannibal told him and went to the door. I'll ring for Jimmy and then join you in the bath. No, Hannibal! Will called, lifting his head, the threat of distress in his voice bringing a concerned frown to his husband's face. I just, uh... Hannibal's heart sank when he saw the strained look on Will's face, and the wild anxiety in his expressive blue eyes. Is something the matter, Will? No, I, um, I just need a moment, Will said, the pink of his skin consolidating into his cheeks, a stark contrast to the dark circles beneath his eyes. He dropped weight in the last few days through sweating and exertion, and looked too sharp to Hannibal, drawn and tired. I'm not, um... Hannibal smiled, trying not to let his disappointment translate in his body language to trouble his flustered mate. I apologize, Will. I didn't mean to overstep. Of course, you must want some privacy after so long. It was thoughtless of me not to realize. Hannibal, Will said again, pausing him as he opened the sweet door. When Hannibal's amber eyes met his, they were glittering and hopeful, but wary, as if it was too much to hope that their time together could continue as it had. I just... I need some time to wrap my mind around the last few days, that's all. I, I just need to catch my breath. Hannibal nodded. His voice was a soft, soothing purr when he said, It is always yours to choose, Will. I'll leave you to your thoughts and go ring for Jimmy for you. Take your time, Will. There's no hurry. The inference stayed with Will long after Hannibal left, closing the door quietly behind him to leave Will alone, just as he'd asked. He thought it might give him perspective. He thought being outside of Hannibal's influence might grant him a moment to reflect on things objectively, but it didn't work that way, not this time. Instead, he cleaned up slowly in the bath and found himself reliving the moments his mind had catalogued, heat, haze, or not. He soaked in the tub, every whispered word said as if for the first time, every loving touch trailing over him anew, every flash of heavy alpha fangs bared in a grin, filling him with warm, comfortable affection. Greedy, 
Hannibal had purred, and Will flinched, touching his throat again. For the first time in a long, long time, he felt a familiar ache wrap its spindly, cold fingers around his heart, and he shivered in its clutches, wondering if he was his father's son after all, willing to sacrifice Hannibal's future and happiness on the very altar he had worked so hard to fill. 